Nintendo does it once again. They updated the 3DS family of systems to 11.17.0, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to install custom firmware on your new Nintendo 3DS, so this guide is not compatible with older 3DS models. Now before we dive in, I just want to mention that this tutorial is for educational purposes only. Anyways, I'm Anton, and let's get started. First things first, you'll need a device that can read and write to an SD card. You can use a PC, Mac, Chromebook, or even a mobile device, as long as it has a file manager and internet browser. As no applications are needed apart from the optional FAT32 format for Windows, this tutorial is specifically designed for new Nintendo 3DS systems, which includes the new Nintendo 3DS, new Nintendo 3DS XL, and the new Nintendo 2DS XL. If your system has a C-Stick nub, it is a newer model and is compatible with this guide. If your system is already modded or you think it is, I recommend not proceeding with this tutorial, as your system may get bricked. An easy way to check if your system is modded is to hold the select button while pressing the power button. If you don't see the screen, you're good to go. Now, I'm not responsible for anything that were to go wrong while following this tutorial, but if you follow it carefully, you should have no issues, as bricking a 3DS seems to be a rare occurrence nowadays. If you have any digitally purchased titles, they will not be affected. Just be cautious when playing online on Nintendo servers, as cheating can get you banned. Every new Nintendo 3DS system includes an SD card, 4GB in size. You can use this one to install the custom firmware, but I would highly recommend getting a larger one, so you can do way more and don't have to worry about upgrading. I picked up a SanDisk 128GB SD card, and it has been working wonderfully. You can go larger, but 128GB seems like the most practical, and they are pretty affordable too. Make sure you buy a notable SD card brand, and that it has a fast read speed such as 120MB per second, as loading times may take a while if it's too slow and may even lead to some crashes, so don't cheap out on an SD card, as it will make your modding experience way better and will be worth it in the long run. And make sure to have an adapter for your micro SD card, so that way you can insert it into your computer. Next, make sure that your system is updated. Head to System Settings, and of course to do this, you'll need to be connected to the internet, and the firmware version should be listed on the top screen. To update, select Other Settings, then move right three times and select System Update. Press OK, then press I Accept on the Terms and Agreement screen. Press OK. And now it will update. Press OK once finished. It should be on 11.17.0-50, but if it has been updated past this, check the pinned comment or the description to see if the tutorial is still relevant. You also want to make sure that the date and time is set up correctly, as if it is out of date, it will cause issues with parts of this tutorial. Now, if you're using the SD card that came with your Nintendo 3DS, you can skip this section, but if you're upgrading to a larger one, please follow it as we are going to be backing up all of the files. But you don't need to if you don't care about the data on your old SD card and want to start fresh. So we're going to be removing the SD card from our system. You can find it beside the cartridge slot on your new Nintendo 2DS XL, or covered by the bottom plate on your new Nintendo 3DS, or new Nintendo 3DS XL. Next, I'm going to plug it into my adapter and then straight into my PC. Once it's open, you'll see a Nintendo 3DS folder, but you may even see a DCIM folder if you've taken any pictures. Now create a folder and name it something that you'll remember. I'll call mine 3DS Backup. Now just simply drag and drop the folders into your folder. Now eject your stock SD card and insert the one you're going to be upgrading to. Now, the SD card needs to be formatted to FAT32 for the 3DS to read it. If it is XFAT or anything else, it will not work. So for Windows, we are going to use FAT32 format, which you can find on my website in the description and simply click the image to download it, and launch the program. So simply select what drive it is, based on its letter, and then press start. Make sure you have the correct letter selected, as formatting a drive will erase all data from it, so be careful as you probably don't want to erase your entire computer's hard drive. I also recommend closing all windows to avoid any potential errors. Now if you are on Mac, you should be able to format it using Disk Utility. Now just simply drag and drop your backup Nintendo 3DS folder into your new SD card, and everything should be copied over. Once it's finished, close the program, and now our SD card is ready to go. If you are using the SD card included with your system, just connect it to your PC, and if you follow the upgrade process, your upgraded SD card should now be in your PC. So head down to the description and go to the Homebrew 3DS page on the Anton Retro website. So click download, and then click on one of the links, as there are multiple alternatives. This will bring you to a download page, and all you have to do is press download. This will download the Anton Retro 3DS Boot 9 Strap 2023 package, which will include everything you need and does not contain any copyrighted files. Once it's complete, extract the folder using whatever program you prefer. 
Once everything is extracted, open the folder and drag and drop all the files onto your SD card. Now head back to the Entourage website and click on the Super Skater Hacks button. Download the latest release from GitHub. Once the download is completed, extract the folder. Open the folder that corresponds to the region of your 3DS. In the USA folder, you'll see two folders, but you just need to open up the 11.17 plus one. Drag all of the contents from inside the folder onto the root of your SD card. It should now look something like this. Eject your SD card from your computer and insert it into your console. Now power it on. On the home menu, press the left and right shoulder buttons at the same time to open the camera. Then tap the QR code button. Go back to the Antimatro page from earlier and there should be two QR codes. One for USA Europe Japan and the other for Korean systems. Scan the one that applies to your system. If you are unable to open the camera for whatever reason, open the internet browser and manually type in the following corresponding URL. If you get a security certificate warning, press A to allow the connection. Then tap the star icon in the bottom left corner of the screen. Tap bookmark this page. Press B once again to return to the browser. Tap the three line menu button on the bottom right corner of the screen. Tap on settings. Then delete cookies. Tap yes. Press Home to return to the Home menu. Then immediately press A to launch the browser again. Tap on the Go Go button at the top of the bottom screen. If any prompts appear, approve all of them. If the screen goes all weird, then don't worry as it's completely normal. If the exploit was successful, your console will boot into the Homebrew Launcher. If you do run into any issues such as freezing, just try following the steps again. Now launch Slot Tool from the list of homebrew software. If you get stuck upon launching it, forcefully power off the console by holding the power button for 15 seconds. Then go back to the internet browser and launch the homebrew launcher again. Select the install exploit to Wi-Fi slots 1, 2, 3 and shutdown option. That was a mouthful. And press A. You will see some on-screen text and then your system will shut down. When it is in this state, press the left shoulder and right shoulder triggers, D-pad up, and the A button. Then while holding these, press the power button. Keep holding these buttons until the device reboots into safe mode. If it boots into the home menu, just shut down and try again. While in safe mode, press OK. Then press I accept on the terms and agreements screen. Press OK. Now this update will fail, and don't worry as this is intentional. Press OK on the air screen, and when it asks you if you'd like to configure your internet settings, press Yes. On the Connection Settings menu, press Connection 1, and then press Change Settings. Now press the right arrow once and select Proxy Settings. Press Detailed Setup. If everything was successful, your 3DS should now boot into the safe B9S installer. If you're using the SD card that is included with the system, you may not see the screen. If so, you may need to get another SD card like the one I'm using. When prompted, input the given key combination on the top screen. Boot 9 strap will now be installed. Once completed, press A to reboot your system. Now it should boot into the Luma configuration screen. Press the start button to save and restart the system. Your system should now boot into Luma 3DS, the custom version of the home menu which does not look any different from the official one. We're almost done, but we need to finalize a few things, set up homebrew applications, and make system file backups. Open Download Play. Once loaded, press the left shoulder trigger, D-pad down, and select all at the same time. The Rosalina menu should now appear. Now scroll down to miscellaneous options, press A. And press the A button on Switch the HP title to the current app. Press B to continue. And press B twice again to exit the menu. Press the home button and exit download play. Once the software is closed, relaunch download play. And you should now be in the homebrew launcher. Launch slot tool for the last time. Navigate to restore original Wi-Fi slots 1, 2, 3 and press A. Your console will now reboot. Open download play. Once loaded, press left shoulder trigger, 
D-pad down and select all at the same time to reopen the Rosalina menu. Now scroll down to miscellaneous options, press A, and scroll down to dump DSP firmware. Press A to select it, and then press B. Now scroll up to nullify user time offset, press A to select it, and then press B again to exit. Press B twice to exit the Rosalina menu. Press the home button and exit download play. Now we're going to power down our device. Once it's shut off, hold start while pressing the power button. This will launch God Mode 9. Use the volume slider to increase the brightness. If it asks you to create an essential files backup, press A and then press A again once it has been completed. If you are prompted to set the RTC date and time, press A and set the date and time. Once you're finished, press A to continue. You should now be at the God Mode 9 main menu. Now press the home button to reveal the action menu. Select scripts, then press A to select finalize. And press A to continue. Now press A again to unlock writing permissions to SysNAND, then input the provided key combination. Make sure you have at least 1.3GB of free space on your SD card, or else you will receive an error. The app installation and backup process will take quite a while. Press A when it's completed. Our NAND is now successfully exported. Insert your SD card back into your PC and navigate to the GM9 folder. Go to the out folder and you should see a bunch of files. Now create a folder on your PC and drag and drop all the files onto it. Make sure you name it something that you'll remember. It is also recommended to save these files to multiple locations just in case. Now eject your SD card from your computer and place it into your system. Power it on. And congratulations, your Nintendo 3DS is fully modded. You can now unwrap all of the apps and dive into the world of 3DS Homebrew. Now let's take a look at all the applications that the package provides. First up is an enemy, which is the theme loader that can allow you to load up themes, including custom ones. Check out the theme plaza to view, download, and even upload your own. It's a great way to customize your system. Next, we have Checkpoint, which is a save game manager. It allows you to make backups of your save data, and you can also load up cheats. Just don't use them online. Next, you've got the Homebrew Launcher, which allows us to launch Homebrew software, including .3dsx files that do not appear on the 3ds home menu. The Universal Updater at first glance may seem like some random configuration software, but upon closer inspection, it's actually a homebrew store that allows you to install and update homebrew applications. There are many cool ones to check out, so I recommend exploring them. Next, we've got the Age Shop, which includes homebrew applications not found on the Universal Updater. Next, we've got FBI, which is an open source title manager for the 3DS, and it even allows you to scan QR codes. FTPD 3DS is a tool for easily transferring files between your 3DS and computer using an FTP client. And finally, we have God Mode 9, which is a complete file manager. Not only can it back up your system's NAND, but you can also back up your physical collection. Anyways, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing to see more heading your way. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, and you can also check out the Discord server. And with that, I will see you all in the next one.